super excited about making this video. I've been really looking forward to this one for weeks. Honestly, I was so impressed by the questions. This was part of a competition to win a lesson and a mentoring session with me this summer. Because there were so many questions that I really wanted to answer, I'm gonna do two episodes. So today I'm going to announce one of the winners and then next week we'll have the second episode and I'll announce the second winner. So the first question is from Wendy, who is 14 years old and from Los Angeles. And Wendy says, I'm currently learning piano as a student. My biggest dream is to win a big international piano competition before I turn 17 and become a concert pianist. My question is, how can you put away all stage fright every time you perform? I always get nervous before performing. So Wendy, I mean, <laughs> I still get extremely nervous. I'd love to say that it will improve with time, but honestly for me it hasn't. Um, I've just learned how to manage it more. I think it still is a real, it's a real struggle for me every time to get on stage. Um, and actually, I think it's normal and I think it's a sign that you really care about your performance, which is very important. So I did a bit of research for your question about other pianists who experienced stage fright and I found out that Horowitz used to get so terrified, he was in so much anguish before every concert that he would get stomach convulsions and he sometimes had to be forced to go on stage. And I also found that Marta Argerich gets terribly nervous and even has tried to cut her finger so that she wouldn't have to go on. I mean, that sounds really extreme, but to be honest, I can relate to that because um, I have often seriously considered running away <laughs> for a concert so that I wouldn't have to perform. It feels like sometimes I'm gonna die if I go on the stage. It feels like a life and death scenario, which I don't know if that sounds ridiculous, but that's how it feels. And um, it hasn't really got better with experience, but I have learned how to manage those feelings to allow myself to stay calm and kind of stay focused and centered before I go on. I'd actually maybe like to do a separate video about this because I do have lots of strategies, but just to be, you know, as an overview um, today, the first thing is that I make sure I have a calm and relaxed routine during the day. Um, I think it helps to have things that are certain because there's enough uncertainty <laughs> when you're doing a concert. Um, the second thing is when I'm in the green room during the afternoon and before the concert, I try to think about what I love about the music that I'm going to play. So I'm no longer thinking about um, the notes or the memory or anything like that. I'm thinking about why I'm passionate about this particular piece or these pieces and what the composer is saying and what an honour it is for me to be able to play it. You know, I've done all the work by then. And my only job in the concert is to enjoy it. I do quite a bit of deep breathing and stretching and these are things that I've learned from yoga and um, Pilates and uh, meditation, um, which helps me to stay kind of in my body. So instead of panicking, you know, going into my head, like worrying about what could go wrong, I just try and stay calm in my body and focus on breathing in, breathing out. Um, you can also do some poses for confidence. It's called a power pose. That's helpful for me. And then what I do is imagine the sound and the feeling of playing the very first notes of the first piece. And that's, I just stay within that sort of visualization as I walk onto the stage. Okay, so the next question is from Ruchi, who is just 14 and from Kenya. And Ruchi says, I noticed when you played the first movement from Gaspard Lanoui, you played it in a very relaxed way. How can I maintain freedom in my shoulders and not let them shrug or become tense? Okay, great question. To be honest, I still think about this every day, whether I'm relaxed when I'm playing. And often I find that I'm not, especially if I'm 
um, struggling to express something in the music, I find that the the effort, <laughs> the effort of doing that and trying to trying to express it, it makes everything kind of hold. And then I have to really rethink how I'm playing it to let that tension release, because physical freedom and relaxation translates directly into musical freedom and it's really hard to let the music flow naturally through you if you're holding something in your body so the first thing that you can do is if you're you know <laughs> if you're committed enough you can get a full length mirror and put this by the piano and then you can just check every now and again what your shoulders are doing I did this when I was younger and it's quite helpful just to have that reminder, oh yeah, be relaxed. Um, but I'm also going to show you something that you can experiment with to find your own feeling of relaxation and freedom. So what I do is, whatever piece I'm playing, I play it a bit slower or very slow. And instead of thinking about how it sounds, I focus only on how it feels. It doesn't matter if, you know, the notes are wrong or anything. Just just enjoy the feeling of playing those notes. And what you're aiming for is a total feeling of ease and to allow the music to flow through your body, through your arms, through your fingers, through the keys and into the ground. Sometimes you'll notice that something is holding like it might be in your shoulders it might be in your arm like that, that it's not totally free it might be in your stomach even you know sometimes when you're feeling a bit under pressure or worried you can hold in your stomach so when you feel that when you notice that just try to maybe give it a little shake take some big breaths and before you continue playing just release everything. And then as you carry on playing, you'll at some point notice that something else has tensed up. Keep checking all the parts of your body. It's like scanning through your body as you play. And just take your time, you know, enjoy it. Give yourself that time to just experiment. The next question is from Mark, who's also in Nairobi. And Mark says, I have a band called Young Star Band. In your experience, what is the best way for me to grow as a band? I have tried applying for spots in malls and hotels, but their response was no. So this is a relevant question for soloists as well as groups and bands. And um, it's really hard to get started. It's a very competitive arena as a musician. And I think you have to be willing to put in some really hard graft, especially at the beginning. Um, Mark, I think you're doing exactly the right thing by asking for these opportunities. Keep on asking and looking for new places to play. Eventually one is gonna say yes. And when that person says yes, there's a kind of a slow snowball effect. So, you know, maybe someone else will hear you at that performance and then they might invite you. Or you can use the first performance to film yourself and get some good footage and send that round to more people. If I get a concert in a new um, city or a new country, or it's a big concert, I always spend time thinking about who I can invite to see me play. You know, other people in that area, in that country, um, orchestra directors, promoters, conductors, people that I'd like to work with, I'm always trying to use each concert as a way to get more opportunities. And honestly, over the years, I've generally found that the rate of return is about one in 20. So out of 20 initial conversations, maybe one of them will actually end up in an invitation to play a recital or a concerto. So when you think about it, that's quite a slow, <laughs> quite a slow rate but it does build up over time because then when you've played somewhere, they will invite you back if it's good. And um, as more and more people start inviting you back and more and more people hear about you, it becomes quicker and quicker. It is a bit of a slog, but it's something that we have to do if we want to perform. 
The other thing that I would say is, in the meantime, really keep focusing on your playing and on your slickness as an act. I'd say take any chance you can to play in front of people and to get feedback. So, I mean, maybe could you play at friends' parties, for example? If venues are saying no at the moment, then use that opportunity to work out how can we improve? Why are they saying no? Is there something specific that they're looking for? You could even ask them what would make you want to book us in future and then take that seriously. You know, that is valuable feedback um, so that when someone eventually does say yes, they'd like you to play then you can really, really impress them and they'll straight away invite you back. And that's how it all gets started. So good luck. Okay, next question is from Jude, who is 13 years old and from Gosport in the UK. Jude says, I'm working towards grade seven. My question is, what are the important things to consider when trying to create a certain emotion, feeling or atmosphere while playing? And are there any practice techniques that can help to do this? Okay, this is a massive question. <laughs> wow, it's like my whole life's work. I think that the most important thing is to have really clear and vivid in your mind and in your heart what it is that you're trying to convey. So it's not enough to say this bit is sad or this phrase is excited. It's not specific enough. It has to be something that really means something to you, something that is real to you as a person, something that you have experienced and that you can feel in detail what that looks like or what that feels like. And that's probably why people talk about, you know, if you want to be a musician, you have to live a full and rounded life because the more you experience, the more you can express. But you can also use scenes from books or films, you can use images that you've seen that have made an impact on you. So for example, I don't know, sunlight sparkling on the sea or something, or the light, the first light of sunrise, you know, the quality of that light. Um, or something that you have experienced, an emotion that you have felt. Uh, but you have to be able to make that real to yourself as you sit at the piano to conjure up in your mind the qualities of that image or feeling. So that's the first thing, make it real and personal and specific to you. I think then to apply this, here are two things that you can think about. The first one is the sound that you're trying to make. So the texture of the sound or the brightness? Is it a rich sound, a thick sound or a delicate sound? Um, and the dynamic that would be appropriate in order to convey this feeling or image that you have conjured up in your mind. So for example, if we're going with the sunlight sparkling, I would be thinking a delicate sound, bright but quiet, maybe slightly detached to get that sort of sparkle, you know, almost disjointed nature of when you see the, the sunlight reflecting off the waves. And all of those things put together kind of tell my fingers how to behave. The second thing to think about is how would that feeling or scene um, be expressed in movement. Each um, emotion or mood will have a corresponding quality of movement. This is quite hard to explain actually. I really feel like this is getting to the, the crux of what it means to be a musician and it's this is something that musicians work on for their whole lives, you know, how to express these things. And so I hope that this is like some kind of glimpse into that. The crucial thing is for it to feel real to you and important. And if you don't feel that way about the piece, then, you know, maybe it's not the right time to play that piece. Maybe try and find a piece that you do feel really strongly about.
spoken in another video about um, how I choose repertoire. The main criterion actually is do I feel really passionately about it that I have something to say that this means something to me and if I don't then I don't learn it you know I maybe come back to it like in five years or something when it feels more personal to me. Having answered that question um, I'm going to say that Jude is today's winner because this question really made me think a lot about what it is that I'm doing. So Jude, congratulations, and um, you can contact me through my website to set up your lesson, and I'm really looking forward to working with you. And I will see everyone next week for the second episode of the Q&A.